Hey hockey players, Kevin here from HockeyTraining.com and in this video I'm going to show you guys an example explainer video from one of our phases in our off-season hockey training program. This will give you a better idea of what to expect when signing up for off-season domination. So let's get right into the video. Hey there and welcome to phase five of the off-season domination plan. In this phase, we're really going to be driving home maximum power development. Okay, there's a big confusion a lot of times between strength and power, and I'm going to clear that up right now. Strength is your absolute force production, whereas power is the rate at which you can produce that force. For example, if you have two athletes who can deadlift 300 pounds, one athlete can deadlift it in half the time, so he's much faster, that athlete is more powerful. They have the same amount of strength, but the one who can deadlift it faster is more powerful. Power relates to your rate of force production, whereas strength is simply your absolute force production. All right, if you remember back all the way back to earlier phase, we worked on absolute strength to get your absolute strength up. But now that the hockey season's getting closer, we need to increase your rate of force production so that you can use that new strength to propel you forward on the ice, like I talked about in the last phase. So you can use that new strength to do a slap shot in half the time or to get your breakaway speed yeah, twice as fast, right? Power is what's gonna allow you to be explosive. When people talk explosive hockey speed, Technically speaking, from muscle physiology, it's power development because you're increasing the rate of force. So you're able to explode out of wherever you are, even though your strength may be the same as your opponent's. That's what real agility and real speed and real explosiveness is all about. So now that that season's getting closer to us, we need to make you as explosive as possible. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do that with the contrast method. And the contrast method has been around forever. Like I'm talking the 50s and 60s, and that's just in documentation in the 50s and 60s. It's likely it was around before that and it just wasn't documented or researched or in any strength magazines yet because it wasn't very popular to do sports specific conditioning way back when. But this has been around for decades. And when things are around for decades, it's because they work. So they've been proven on the battlefield, but there's also been dozens of studies on contrast training at this point in time, all demonstrated incredibly effective for power development. What I like contrast training for, working with thousands of hockey athletes, I find that it helps as a bridging system that is perfect as you're getting closer to the competitive season. Now, what do I mean by this bridge? Well, there's a difference, and I'm sure you know this, between gym strength and then someone's ability to actually utilize that strength out in the ice. So I like to say gym strength and performance strength. When someone say has a strong squat, deadlift, bench press, whatever they can do in the gym, it does not mean they're a good athlete. It also doesn't mean that they're fast or explosive at all. Your ability to translate this strength into usable hockey specific speed and power outputs on the ice is a totally different ball game. Or else powerlifters would be the best athletes in the world. And we all know that that isn't true, okay? Contrast training is a phenomenal bridging system to help you bridge all of that gym strength that you gain this off season into usable speed power outputs on the ice so you can dominate when you enter the competitive season this year. How does it increase that power, right? What is rate of force production? Rate of force is really just your nervous system adapting to recruit more muscle fibers a lot faster than you otherwise would have, okay? I like to use the example of a car and a driver. A car is your muscle tissue, okay? But your nervous system is the driver. Your nervous system is what actually recruits your muscle fibers in order to contract and do anything that you want to do. So the nervous system is grabbing muscle fibers, allowing them to contract so that you can train in the gym or skate in the ice, whatever it's going to be. But your muscle is just the engine. 
the driver always needs to activate that engine so it can do whatever it wants you to do. That's why, say, bodybuilders aren't athletes. They've got a great big V12 engine, but their driver sucks when it comes to outputting things on the ice. Contrast training, you're gonna find it really increases that adaptation for increasing your driver, which is ultimately what's gonna lead to athletic performance. Now we're still keeping our resistance training three times a week because I'm really upping the ante on your uh, aerobic, um, anaerobic, sorry, conditioning and your speed outputs. So we're gonna do day one lower, day three upper, and day five total. And we're doing contrast training on all three of these days. And you're gonna find what contrast training is. It's loading a very heavy movement first and then unloading to a very, very light movement. For example, heavy barbell bench press, but then waiting 15 seconds and then immediately going into plyo push-ups. So you're using the same muscle groups, but going from really heavy to really light so that your nervous system, your driver, is recruiting all these muscle fibers thinking that it's gonna do three rep max on bench press, but you're moving into a plyometric push-up. And then when you do that plyo push-up, you're much more explosive than you otherwise would have because your driver already has the gas pedal all the way down. This is how this works. That's what contrast training is. Now, why did I explain that? because it's a 15 second break, okay? If you wait any longer than that in between your superset, say of A1 to A2, it's no longer contrast training. It is not contrast training if you're gonna be waiting longer than that, okay? So do not wait longer than that. You wanna go from heavy, 15 seconds, to the unloaded movement, that's how we increase power. Very important rule to follow. I'm also up in the ante. So we've got your anaerobic conditioning on day two, speed on day four, and more anaerobic conditioning on day six. And we're keeping your tempo runs in there to make sure you're also always aerobically conditioned as well. Because hockey athletes, they kind of need everything, right? When you think about hockey, you're expected to be strong, powerful, um, have some size on you. You should have aerobic conditioning because the game can be a couple hours in duration, but you also need to have anaerobic conditioning because hockey is an anaerobic sport when you're skating as fast as you can and shooting as hard as you can and checking as hard as you can. All of these things, you need all of these qualities. Not to mention, with the speed training, we're also working on your acceleration, we're working on your top speed, we're working on your starting speed, all of these are different trainable qualities that we've been hitting all year. And now force production is at its absolute highest, which is really gonna turn all that gym strength into performance strength out in the ice. That's how we're hitting this phase, you guys. This is when you're gonna start seeing your outputs hit top, top, top levels. I promise you, do this phase hard, do it right, and you're gonna have phenomenal performance.